What's going on, math people? Today we are here and we are talking about the chain rule. Straight up the chain rule. All right? So, here's the thing. When you look at this and you see all of this math jargon, it can rightfully so look very intimidating. Real talk, when I first saw the chain rule, hey, it ate your boy up. All right, so going through this, you see this craziness that's on the screen. It says, if f of u is differentiable at the point u equal g, at, g of x, and g of x is differentiable at x, then the composite function f of g of x equal f of g of g, g of x is differentiable at x. And that mess right there is just like... Boom, it seems like it's mind blowing, right? Okay, we're gonna try to change up that game, right? In my honest opinion, the best way to explain the chain rule is to jump into a problem, all right? So we're gonna jump into a problem. So let's just get this madness off the screen and get us something to write on. All right, so let's say we have y equals, and let's say we have inside the parenthesis, inside the parenthesis we have, we have seven x squared minus nine x. And the final thing is all of this is to the cube power, right? All right, so all of that is to the cube power. And so let's jump into this thing called the chain rule. Now, my take on the chain rule, when we are finding this information, you want to work from the outside in. So we have, we identify, the first thing you have to do is identify how many differentiable functions are present. All right, so in the blue, you see the entire expression there on the inside is uh, raised to the third power. So the blue is one, the first thing you will take the derivative of. So we have three, we apply the power rule here. That dropped us off at a square or something right there. All right, so we apply the power rule. And here's the beauty of this. Whatever was on the inside, it stays on the inside. All right, so 7x squared came on down. Now you multiply it by the derivative of the information that was on the inside. And that is 14x minus nine. That's the chain rule. However many differential expressions you see in your initial problem, that's how many times, that's how many times you're gonna take a derivative. So we had two differentiable expressions we had the third power was one because it raised the entire quantity to the third power. And we also had seven X squared minus nine X as another one. Uh, haven't, haven't sold you on this just yet. Uh, if you were to simplify this, then you would go through most, most software nowadays will let you input your answer like so. But let's let's do another example to make you a believer. All right. So this example, we have we have y equals e to the negative eighteen x. All right. So e is a differentiable expression. And negative 18x is a differentiable expression. So right there, we're going to be taking the derivative of two things. So 
when we're finding a derivative of y with respect of x, we have the derivative of e to the anything is itself. We took care of that first part. All right. Now we also have to take derivative of that negative 18x. negative 18. We identified two differential expressions. The first one, the first differential expression was with respect to this function e. And it's, it will always be itself raised to whatever, it po whatever power it is. So that's the first part of that. And then we took derivative of that negative 18x, which gave us just negative 18. Your final answer, just make it look pretty, bring that negative 18 out front. Okay. And personally, I like explaining the chain rule before going into trig derivatives because you can have all kinds of embeddings inside trig functions. So I'm just gonna to toss in an example, including a trig function so that you can see. Let's say we have y equals sine of 32x minus 19. All right. In front of us, we have two differentiable expressions here. We have the sine function and we'll take the derivative of. And we also have the expression that's inside of that sine function, 32x minus 19. All right. So when we get ready to take derivative, that's telling us we're gonna to have to differentiate twice with respect to this chain rule. So we have derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. And everything that was inside stays inside, so come on with it. And then we will take the derivative of what's inside, and that's derivative of 32x minus 19, derivative of 32x, applying the power rule for derivatives, gives us 32, derivative of a constant, that piece goes to zero. So final answer, make it nice and pretty. You bring that 32 to the front because that is a coefficient. That 32 is not embedded inside of that trig function cosine. Nice and clean, all right? Now, here's where things can get crazy, right? I want you to check it now because I've been building up to this point. And this will be the final example for this chain rule video. All right, so we have y equals e to the sine of 15x squared minus 4. I've been building up to this point. Okay, I might do another example after this. Just one more though. So we have dy dx oh no that was by mistake all right equals all right so we're gonna go through right quick we have one two three
that's telling us that we're going to be taking that derivative three times. What we're not taking a third derivative, but we're going to have to apply some form of a derivative three times. So we already know that the derivative of e is itself with everything that was in its exponent. So uh, I meant to write all of that in blue. So y'all just let me go ahead and slide that into blue. We have e to the sine of 15x squared minus four times. The first thing in its exponent is that sine function, all right? Derivative of sine is cosine. And you take everything that was inside of the sine function and it stays inside of the cosine function. And then finally, times the derivative of what's inside of that cosine, what that was inside of the sine function up top, and that gives us 30 x so when we write out our final answer that is equal to 30 x times e let me write it a little bit more clean 30 x times e to the sine of 15 x squared minus 4 times cosine of 15x squared minus 4. I know, I know, but hey, once you can identify all the functions, it's easy to roll out a derivative. Now, whenever you bring in a radical into an example, I say the same thing over and over and over and over again. Rewrite the radical. Rewrite the radical. You're going to need to rewrite that radical. So we have, let's say we have y equals the square root of negative 7 plus 4x. Negative 7 plus 4x. All right. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite my function. So over here, I'm just going to write rewrite. This is y equals the square root function is the same thing as saying the one half power. All right. So now I can clearly see all that I that all that I'm working with. All right. On the outside there. I have my one half power in the blue. All right. And on the inside, I have my little expression in the red and black. All right. So again, whenever I'm doing the chain rule on these problems, all right, dy dx. I'm going from the outside in. So I'm going to take care of this blue. Apply the power rule. Bring that one half down front. Leave my parentheses open. That's raised to the one half minus one. We know that the power rule will always say subtract one from whatever the exponent is. And gonna bring down what was already in the parentheses. Next, it's time for me to take the derivative of the information that's inside of that parentheses. The derivative of the constant goes to zero, the derivative of that 4x, I'm going straight to the piece with the variable, that's four. So that's going to leave my final answer equal 
I have one half on the outside times a four that's on the outside. That's going to give me two times negative seven plus four x to the negative one half power. Some textbooks might want you to put your radical back inside your problem. So you have two over. We over because it's a negative power there. So I have negative seven plus four X to the one half. That negative on that exponent just simply said, put me in the right location. Right now I'm in the numerator, I should be in the denominator. Finally, we have two over the square root of negative seven plus 4x.